On the story, Joe Syracusa is here. He's an author and professor of security and diplomacy at Curtin University, joining us from Melbourne. Joe, good to have you. Good to see you too. All right, so for our viewers, explain to us who owns the Arctic? How are these claims even established? Who decides? Well, a number of countries are contiguous to the Arctic area, but that's not the point. The point is where the, the minerals are, that is where the ice is melting. Nobody has a claim. The United Nations um, has no say about who gets what or who goes where. And so we're going to have military powers uh, coming in with very hard elbows to try to take positions on, on this. And, and, and look, Michelle, this is, this is big because 15 percent of the uh, the world's uh, oil is there, probably 30, 35% of the untapped gas, not to mention all the fish in the world, the very things that uh, mm. China would go to war for in the South China Sea. This is going to be similar to the uh, scramble for Africa in the late 1880s and uh, the Oklahoma land rush. This is free. First one there uh, <laughs> get, get, gets the money. So uh, the United States may have to fight its way in there. It hasn't had paid much attention. But in the past, the, 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 the Arctic's been important because all Soviet missiles were going to come over the North Pole anyway. We knew that as kids growing up in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, and, and right, you know, because of the energy crisis, and oddly enough, despite all the talk about uh, global climate change, people are going to be scrambling for oil and gas, and they don't want to be uh, cold next winter when that Russian oil goes off. And uh, so there will be a, a scramble for that. And also, the, the, the Russians couldn't care who they insult or the, who they push along the way. Because of the efforts of the Western community to turn uh, Russia into an uh, economic pariah, you know, all the rules are off the table. They don't care what people think, so they're going to push their way in. And the Chinese are very clever. They say that because they're one quarter of the human race, they're t entitled to one quarter of the minerals there, both hmm. under the water, maybe below the ice. So <laughs> they're, they're, they got a claim, too. So look, it's big money. We're talking about trillions and trillions of dollars. It's just sitting there. And of course, the bonus for these countries which are always on the lookout for, for generating energy and, and resources or revenue, is that the, uh, the Arctic shelf is melting. That area will be probably ice-free by 2035. Gosh. And so there'll be no trouble to, no trouble to getting the, uh, the, big, uh, the big drills in there and, 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 and the rest of it. And so they're going to bring it up. And it's just sitting there waiting for someone. But look, there are six or seven nations on the con on, uh, contiguous to it. And of course, there is a... There is a a kicker here, Michelle, and that is uh, if uh, Russia gets in a conflict with Canada, which has a large claim, Canada's a NATO power. So we go back to the NATO exactly. business, the NATO threat. So th well, I, I would watch this for two reasons. Uh, number two, to watch what happens to this area in terms of its mineral resources and how quickly it's drilled out. And number two is a potential uh, um, uh, point of conflict between yeah. uh, uh, Russia and NATO. And look, er Every great war in history has had points of conflict. And this one, is, I think, is boding to be a very large one. Well, Russia has very visibly asserted itself there, for sure. But is it true that Russia dominates the Arctic right now? Well, they have um, leftover bases there. They put planes in. They've got boats and icebreakers. Uh, yeah, they're, they're kind of all over the place, you know, they the, uh, the, the Russians are to the North Pole what uh, the Chicago Bears are to Chicago. They like to play in the cold. <laughs> They've been yeah. there for a long time. They, they know it much better than we do. And so they have a natural claim to it. And of course, if they have to fight somebody off, they will. They're in a better position. They have more uh, men and material there today than, than all of us put together. And of course, the Canadians have ignored it because it's so damn big. The Canadians have about two boats to cover the area of the continental of Europe. And the United States hasn't much, but much been interested in the North Pole. They've been interested in other things. And of course, the Americans have been trying to get out of Europe for 20 years so they can pivot to Asia. And guess what? That ain't going to happen either. Yeah, I remember the Obama administration really took a lot of pressure on to, you know, get a foothold there. Look at what Russia's doing. We need to do something, too, being in the United States. And they did devote more resources for military equipment, icebreaker ships in the Arctic. But how far behind is the U.S. to those kinds of claims behind Russia? I'd say we're about 10 years behind. Uh, hey, look, if uh, I were a young man in my 40s and I had billions of dollars to invest like Musk, I'd, I'd be <clears throat> heading for that part of the world. Oil, gas, gold, it's all there. And I'm sure there are, <clears throat> are other, <clears throat> other minerals in the ground, too. Excuse me.
Yeah, definitely a lot going on there. Hopefully it won't become another flashpoint, but Russia has extended itself quite a bit in Ukraine. We'll see if that affects what it's able to do in the Arctic going forward. Well, yeah, they will um, They will do everything they can. And of course, the, uh, the Russians, there are 144 million people. Okay, 144 million people. And they're going to be on the lookout for every opportunity that comes along. All right, Strategic great, Joe. Always good to hear okay, from thank you. you. Thanks so much. Thank you.